Greetings and welcome to BeAMortgageBroker.com's February webinar, The Benefits of Wholesale in an Ever-Changing Market. I'm your host, Justin White, excited to be joined by two of UWM's leading mortgage experts. We've got Michael Walton and Vince Parlov. Guys, great to be with you. Great to be with you today. Thank, thanks for having us. Well, it's a new year, uh, but many of the same challenges in the industry still affect mortgage professionals on a day-to-day -day basis, namely the uncertainty of the market. So we're gonna take a deep dive into that today, but before we do that, let's talk about the wholesale model in general and the positive ways it can impact business for those who are still in retail lending. So Mike, I wanna start with you. Okay. You know this, but a lot of retail LOs think if they go to wholesale, they're going to lose control. So in your mind, how has this changed over the years and how is it different from what is currently happening right now in retail? So one of the things that that comes from is actually a myth, you know, uh, of what wholesale is like based upon what it used to be like. There was a time where all the control was with the lender. You were at the behest of the lender. And you really couldn't do things yourself. Well, that's not the case anymore. And so now control is at, at all time high and that you can choose how you disclose your documentation to your client. You can choose what program your client's going to go on. You can choose how you present yourself to the public and how you want to structure your business to best fit who you want to be. Not only for the clientele that you have, but also for the life that you want to live. You can customize your experience in wholesale to a degree you don't see in retail. It's not nine to five anymore. It could be nine to three because I got a soccer game I have to get to, right? And so that's the biggest thing I want to debunk is control really means how much of your destiny do you have a hand in making? And wholesale gives you the whole thing. Yeah, and with the technology piece now, you know, technology has really taken over in, in, in the wholesale arena. So we, we've got that at our backs now. Yeah, it's a great point, Vince. Uh, and, and speaking of Vince, you know, the flexibility to change with the market is so crucial to longevity in this business. So how can originators in your mind position themselves to respond quickly? Because as you've heard before, a lot of retail LOs may think that setting up their own company is going to be a time consuming and difficult process. Well, like Mike said about control, it is easier than it's ever been. We, there is so much help out there for people to get and, and, and just to reach out and get that help is easier now than it ever has been. And in terms of flexibility, one of the other things we have to think about, when markets shift, how do you shift? How, how, how are you able to shift? Well, when you're beholden to one set of circumstances, one set of rules, one set of appetite, that means that you can only approach it one way. Well, what wholesale provides for you is a platter. And I can choose from that platter whatever is necessary and hit whatever appetite I have. That's the flexibility you want in the ever-changing market. That's what you want to be able to do when the market goes up. You want to be able to adjust to the market going up. When it goes down, there's a different set of products you might want to work with. You want to be able to adjust to that. That's the nature of what wholesale is. All right, you just mentioned it, products, Mike. Uh, so I want to ask you, how can wholesale help with going to market with the most effective products with the most effective timing? Love that. So how wholesale works is that you're a broker who works with multiple lenders. Each one of those lenders has their own appetite for what products and services they want to offer. Well, how do you go with the right time and how do you go with the right product? Well, here's the thing. The products are always available. How you use them is up to what's most actually applicable to your situation. So right now, you know, UWM's rolled out a one-time construction loan. Right. Well, that matters now. Why does it matter right now, this moment? Well, existing home sales aren't what they always were. If I'm going after new purchases and new purchase business, I have to get with builders. If I'm working with builders, what's a product that a builder can appreciate? A one time closed construction loan. That's powerful. But if I'm at a retail lender and that retail lender doesn't do it, I have no shot at it. But if I'm a broker and I was using ABC wholesale lender and then UWM rolls out this product, I still have access to pivot and use UWM to gain access to that product that's necessary for the moment. Yeah, right? we, yeah, we always talk about that, right? Is that if you have a product that you need today and you're in wholesale, you can go get it today. You know, somebody in a retail shop has to go to their secondary team, their finance team and say, hey, does, you know, does this product work for us and our mechanism that we have? You know, you go get it today and it, it's now. Vince, uh, you've heard this buzzword a lot lately. Uh, people in the industry talking an awful lot about margins. How does wholesale help protect these when you make less money? Well, you know, margin, margin compression, whatever way you want to put it. You know, it's, it, it's 
in wholesale, the cool thing about it is you don't have all the layers that you have in retail. You know, you have ownership, you have operations, you have, you know, LOs getting paid and whatever, you know, branch expenses they have. When you move over to wholesale, you just have you and your branch and your expenses. So in a lot of cases, we're seeing people making more money than they're they're doing on the retail side, you know, today. Well, yeah, because you need less, you don't compress as much, right? And so with your with that is also the ability to understand that it's a direct pass through from the revenue you make as a company to you and what you're going to make as an individual. And retail doesn't always give you that because there's layers of everyone having to get their cut. So if I personally decide in wholesale that I'm okay with making 100 basis points, I'm okay with that because the 100 basis points is going to come to me. I don't have to break that up seven different ways. Right. All and right. Once again, you also have the, you can do that now, right? Exactly. You don't have to, you don't have to wait. That's a great point. Um, so with all that laying the foundation, guys, uh, let's transition now to the mortgage market itself and how to see success in the industry regardless of its inevitable cyclical nature. Vince, looking at the market we are currently in, what are we dealing with here? What are your thoughts on what we're seeing? Well, it's no surprise, right? It's a purchase market, right? If you hadn't worked on your referral partners prior, uh, you know, to, you know, today, you know, you're probably reeling just a little bit. But at the end of the day is, is that it's never too late. Get out there, get those referral partners. There's all sorts of help out there in regards to, you know, helping you gain those referral partners as well. And that's where you really need to be. You need to be in the purchase market today. And what I would tell people is, is that don't lose it once you get it. A lot of times people come into that refi boom and they abandon their referral partners. Don't do it. You know, we've seen that a lot. Well, then uh, coming along with that, what we're dealing with is also a very interesting kind of space we're in. Housing affordability has been a question for a while. Whether or not people can get off of the sideline and jump into the market, how much house can I afford? What does that look like? Some people were spooked by the appreciation that went on the last couple of years because you bought a house and then a year later, it's worth $200,000 more. People are coming in with multiple bids and oh my God, they're bidding $100,000 over asking. Well, that's not today. That's no longer the market. So what has shifted is, yes, there's been some depreciation, but not depreciation in the natural sense. It's been a slowing of appreciation. And so instead of something jumping 20,000, it may have only gone up a few thousand dollars or whatever the case may be. So what does that do for us? What does that mean? Well, now we're dealing with inflated rates. Now we're dealing with housing prices that don't look like they're gonna skyrocket much more. Well, that's where the creation of all these programs that we were talking about earlier, that's where they've come into play. So a year ago, a seller wouldn't dream of seller concessions because right. everyone's oh, making yeah. additional yeah. offers. Well, now seller concessions is on the table and almost necessary to ensure that you're gonna sell your home in a reasonable amount of time. You can take advantage of that as a loan officer and as a broker because you have the ability to pivot and move right into the lane that they're standing in this moment. And that's where people who are on the sideline are realizing that market's not gonna pop up the way it was. I probably wanna make a move right now. And some of them don't know that those programs are out there like the buy downs that Vince mentioned that actually makes it affordable for you to still get the home you want. Yeah, and we're seeing that. People are making the moves right now, right? Volume's starting to go up right now. Yep. Yeah, I, I love the point you make. You know, if, if there's an LO who got into the business, say six, seven months ago, they'd probably never heard of seller concessions. And now right. it is such a, a relevant topic in the industry. Mike, a lot of people are wondering about production levels. Mm. And, you know, perspective is everything in this business due to its very cyclical nature, as we've talked about. Will we see a return to the production levels we saw in 2020 through the early part of 2022? <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know. We had a very unique set of circumstances that caused that. You know, during that period, rates got extremely low, what we've never seen before. We even saw 1.99 on a 30-year fix, which is crazy to say out loud, but that's what we had going on during that time. People, as you, we were talking off camera, people said, hey, I didn't have to do much fish and the fish jumped into the boat. Well, that's what the market was. And that's why production was so high. So I can't promise you that you're gonna see that, but what I can promise you is you're gonna see an elevation in production. Because over the next 18 to 24 months, the markets are gonna shift again, and the rates are gonna come down. So the question is, being in the right place in the right time, what does that mean? It means having your business in the right place when that right time comes. So the focus now is realigning my, my perspective with what my goals are, what's the right way to build a business, how do I connect with my referral partners, how do I build that out? Because the purchases I'm doing today are most guaranteed to be my refinances I'm doing 18 to 24 months from now. So the better I adopt, I'm sorry, I adapt to this market and adopt this philosophy, it will allow me to take advantage of the refi boom 
when it comes around and my production at the end of the day is gonna be better than what it is now. So that really is what I care about. Yeah, and don't kid yourself, the referral partners are out there. They're looking for new people with new products and a lot of the, the retail folks don't have the buy down programs and the different programs that the, that the wholesale folks have. So really get out there. Don't think that you're just, you know, you're gonna get business by sitting at home. You gotta get out there and, and, and get on the phones. All right, Vince, speaking of, what are some specific things that LO should be focusing on right now to drive business that perhaps they are missing? Well, we already talked about the referral partners, right? Um, you know, just the, the products that are out there. Do your research, you know what I mean? But, you know, we, we, we really talked about the buy downs and things of that nature, but boy, oh boy, there's all sorts of different products that all the wholesale lenders have that are making, putting you at an advantage to, to do purchase transactions and, and, and for that matter, even refis in some situations as well. You know, we're even seeing that. Well, you also have to evolve, right? You have to be committed to evolution. And even in how you go about getting your referral partners or how you structure deals, now it's not going to be as simple as I'm going to give you a 30 year fix with this payment. Sometimes you may have to do something like, hey, I'm going to give you a flex term with a buy down with, you know, exact rate with this other feature because that's what makes the most sense. That allows me to separate myself from the rest of the pack when people are comparing what I'm offering my clients to what they're offering their clients. And what's beautiful about that is, in speaking of referral partners, there were times we only went after their buying agent. Well, now we can go after the listing agent with these products and show how we can help them sell more homes. That's evolution. That's thinking about looking at my area. What are the trends in my area and what's happening that I can attach to to make sure I customize my business to what's going on? Everything is about customization now, right? Everything in our lives is about convenience now. So buy into that. 10 years ago, were we dealing with TikTok? Probably not. No. Right? 20 years ago, was social media marketing a heavy thing that we all focus on? It wasn't. So you have to evolve with the market, you have to evolve with the changes and make sure you can capitalize on it. Everything you guys are talking about just screams, you know, being creative and also being knowledgeable. Uh, so Vince, in your mind, how much responsibility is on the hands of, of each LO out there right now to really do their homework and, and like Mike was just talking about, figure out different ways that you, that you can put deals together and maybe not just in the traditional sense that they're used to? Yeah, it's, it's all on you. Okay, 100% to go out there and do the work and do the research. Mike talked about stacking different products on top of each other. Get creative. You know, this is not a time where it's just a 30 year fixed and you know, that's all we, all we can sell. You've got so many different things out there. Get creative. You know, don't get yourself boxed into one product and, and, and work it. Really work it. I love that. Cause, and to bring it full circle, that is the essence of control, right? Control allows you to do exactly what we're talking about. It is on you to decide, how do I want my business to move forward? How am I gonna build my business? Well, wholesale gives you the ability to answer that question. Cause that's the hardest thing to deal with whenever you're in this type of environment. I have questions that need answers, but I don't have a way to get to them. Well, wholesale is that solution oriented answer that will fit every situation you're gonna go through because of the control it provides you to actually make yourself what you need to be for that moment in time. Great, great point. Um, you, you both have, have given some great insights on how LOs can be effective uh, originating in the wholesale channel. But I wanna back it up for a moment as we come to the end here. And I wanna start with you, Mike. Okay. For the retail LOs out there who are watching this and wondering how they can make the switch from retail to wholesale and ensure it is a smooth transition, what's your advice for them? Get help, the help's there. You know, check out BeAMortgageBroker.com. They're gonna pair you with someone who can walk you through the process. You, the best and easiest road to take is the one that's already paved. And we've laid this out. We have people who've laid this out for you. You can connect with them so that you can go ahead and make your transition as smooth as possible. And then the second thing I would say is you become who you surround yourself by. Make sure you surround yourself with the success that you want to see. And in that transition, you're gonna do that by aligning yourself with lenders who are gonna support you as a platform, not you as just another means to a transaction. And I think if you focus on following what's already been laid, yes. connecting with the right people, that'll make that shift as, as simple as possible. It's easier than ever, Mike, you really hit it. You know, there's so much help out there. Go get it, get help through BeAMortgageBroker.com or whatever avenue. Well, as I said, great insights from both of you. Huge thanks to Mike and Vince for sharing with our viewers. And thanks to all of you for your support and your continued interest in the content that BeAMortgageBroker.com is putting out to help mortgage professionals across the country succeed. I'm Justin White. Thanks for watching, everybody.